What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to an episode of the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. I'm Sam. I'm going alone today, but it's going to be a fun video. We're looking to get back at it. Uh, me and Mike have been really busy, so we're just looking to fit in some videos. And now, now that the season's getting underway, we're really looking at attacking uh, some of these games here. But we're going to start with the with the big daddy of all the season episodes, and this is the season prediction. This is uh, – playoffpredictors.com it's a website that you can use to kind of predict nfl games and um you're going to look to predict the seahawks season give my thoughts on each game see whether i think we're going to win or lose and uh end up go ahead and give my prediction for it i'm just going to get straight underway here with the big game everyone's talking about it broncos seahawks monday night football i'm just gonna start by saying broncos are gonna win this game i don't I don't really have any doubt that the Broncos are going to win this game. I'm pretty confident that, that you know, I think we're going to play a, a good enough game to stay in it. I think it's going to be like, I, I've said my score prediction to other people is 31 to 21. The Broncos, that's my prediction. I think that so Seahawks are going to hold in. Maybe they get a field goal or a touchdown at the end of the game to kind of widen that gap. But I think that the Seahawks are going to be able to hold in and kind of uh, play good enough football to compete. But they're just not going to be able to keep up. I feel like the quarterback plays for us is really going to be an issue. I feel like the wide the cornerback play is really going to be an issue. And frankly, for me, I'm just not that confident in this roster to beat a team that looks like a playoff squad in Denver week one. And I'm also going to say that we're going to lose week two to the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. Well, I think we're going to win games to San Francisco eventually. Let's win games against San Francisco eventually later in this year because we always do. I just don't – once again, I just don't trust this team at the moment to put together good wins against playoff teams. I think the 49ers are a playoff team. They, they're they just a really complete overall roster. I don't tr- I don't really trust the Seahawks to, you know, keep up with a team with, a, with as good of a roster as the 49ers have. Now, for this next one, I'm going to give it to it for the Seahawks. Seahawks-Falcons, this might be our easiest win all year. The Falcons are not a good team. They're probably the one team worse than the Seahawks in the NFC, maybe besides the Bears. I think that those are the two teams that are worse than the Seahawks at the moment. And um, I think that we're going to be able to get a win at home. We're going to, you know, fans are going to be fans are going to be loud. And I think that Geno is going to find some confidence. Falcons do not have a great D line. They do not have a great linebacking core. Their safeties are bad. They have one good corner, which means that you're going to get DK and Tyler Lockett on some of those mismatches, especially if you get like a DK and like Casey Hayward, who's really not that fast. I think that that the matchups are going to really play out to Seattle's favor here. Uh, I think that Atlanta's receiving core is lackluster. I think their quarterback play is lackluster. I think their O line is lackluster. Uh, so I'm I'm look. I, I think that the Seahawks can be able to capture a win here pretty easily. And I think that, that that they're gonna be able to be one and two by week three. Moving on to week four, this is a game that I really feel is 50 50. Uh Detroit uh Seahawks travel to Detroit to take on the Detroit Lions. For me, I think that the Lions are a really talented team, but I feel like they're overrated in the general scheme of the media. Just because they were in a lot of close games last year does not mean that they are a good team. I don't think that they're a good team looking on the looking at the at the sheet here. I think that their offense is fine. I think that I like their receiving core. I like their O line. They have a really nice tight end and they have good running backs, but their quarterback is Jared Goofball. So I don't I don't really trust them to, you know, play a lot of super competitive football with with other teams. Just consider that Jared Jared Goff is not a great quarterback. Frankly, I think he's about same level as Geno Smith. I think I, I would consider Geno Smith League average to below league average, kind of in that range there. Um, and I think that Jared Goff is the same way. I think that the, that Detroit's defense is questionable at some points as well. Uh, I'm going to give the win to Detroit, but I think that this is going to be a, a single-digit type of game where the Seahawks are in it and they're playing, and maybe they'll, there'll be a couple lead changes in there. But I think that, that Detroit just has a little bit more firepower than the Seahawks. I think that they're – Riding a bit higher than the Seahawks. I'm going to give Detroit the win there in week four. Week five, going to the Saints. The Saints are my sleeper team this year in the NFC. I like Jameis Winston. I like what he can do. Um, I like Jenna Allen, their new head coach. 
I think their new pickups, Chris Olave, Michael Thomas is gonna be coming back. They got Tyron Matthew. I I I think that they're gonna have a, a complete team here. And and frankly, I think that uh I think that the, that the Saints are gearing up for a eleven ish win season if I had to make a prediction there. I think the Saints just have a really talented roster. And if James Winston can even play average, the Saints can win ten games. I just think that the Saints going into New Orleans, into the Dome, it's going to be rocking. Seahawks last year had a really tough time containing Alvin Kamara. I expect the same now that you don't have Bobby Wagner. Uh, so that that's just my prediction there. I think the Saints are going to probably take it to the Seahawks a bit, maybe in our worst loss of the season so far. Uh, traveling now to week six, going back to uh, Lumen Field, take on the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to give the Seahawks the win on this one. Um. Arizona has never really played like their offense has never really played great in Lumen Field for some reason. Like whenever they would come to Lumen Field, their defense would always be really nice. And Kyler Murray doesn't even play like half the games at Lumen because he's for some reason he's always hurt for that game or he gets hurt mid game. And the Seahawks offense just can't keep up now. And it's usually Chandler Jones has a master class game in Lumen every time. Now they don't have Chandler Jones. They they kind of got a bit worse this offseason, in my opinion. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins isn't going to be active for this game. You're going to have, you know, they don't have Christian Kirk anymore. When their number one receiver is Hollywood Brown, I think that the Seahawks are going to be able to, to uh, maybe get a surprise win off the Cardinals here going into week six. Last week without D-Hop, I think the Seahawks are going to be able to win a game there. And also, I, I'm going to have the Seahawks getting a couple division wins here. While I do know that that teams in the division are better on on paper than the Seahawks, I think that there's a couple scenarios, and usually both teams will have each other's numbers. So yeah, I, I I'm a little interested to see how that plays out. Week seven, Seattle traveling to uh, SoFi Stadium. They're familiar with SoFi Stadium. They played at um against the Rams twice in SoFi, so obviously they're familiar with it. It's not it's not foreign territory, but this time they're playing the LA Chargers. I'm giving the LA Chargers the dub. They might have the most talented roster on paper in the NFL. I think that I think that their roster is really well built. And if things can come together, they could be like a 13-14-1 team. If Khalil Mack can play well, if JC Jackson can replicate what he did in New England, um, if Derwin James can stay healthy, if the O-line can keep can just keep protection together. And if, uh, and ultimately also if their head coach uh, can continue to develop, I think that, that they're really in good shape to compete. And I just don't think the Seahawks, this, the Seahawks might be blown out of the water in this game, keeping a hundred percent serious. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not very optimistic about that game. And I'm not optimistic about a lot of these games. This game in week eight is a game I'm pretty optimistic about. Giants traveling to Seattle week eight. I'm going to give Seattle the dub there. Uh, Seattle, I mean, the Giants are just really not a, not, a, not a good team. I don't like their receiving core that much. They have Kadarius Tony, uber talented. Don't get me wrong. They're very talented young receiver. Then you have Kenny Galladay, who seems like he's just given up. He's, he seems like he's given up. They have Darius Slayton, who is – Fine. You have Sterling Shepard, who's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, their tight end core is weak. Saquon is talented, but he can't get behind the an offensive line to save his life. And don't even get me started on Danny Dimes, who is not good. Daniel Jones is not a good quarterback, uh, and I'm not expecting he. Yeah, and I'm not expecting him to uh to pick it up. Their defense is fine. Their their corner it, their cornerbacks are a little lackluster. Same thing with their linebackers. Same thing with their safeties. They're a little lackluster, and I just think that Seattle is going to be able to really exploit them and you get maybe a pretty sizable win here, maybe like a double digit win or a more than one possession type of win for the Seahawks here. I'm pretty confident that we can beat the Giants at home mid season. I think I think we're going to be fine there. N- Next up, 
Any Seattle traveling to Arizona, I'm going to give Arizona the win here. So far, as you can see, I've given the home team every game except for one. Um, that's not really on purpose, I would say. I just think that the games aren't really working out, and I think that I'm not doing that on purpose is all I'm saying. I think Arizona is is going to split with Seattle. I feel like they always do. Um, I, I can't remember. We did not sweep them last year. We took one out of two. Um, so I, I think that we're going to s- split them again this year. It seems like they always split, even if even if one team is clearly better than the other. Another team will have their day. Like I said, I think the Seahawks will have their day in week six, and I think the Cardinals will have their day in week nine in Arizona. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more tuned up. They're going to have D-Hop back. Uh, so I think that that's going to go into Arizona's favor there in week 10. This might be the biggest blowout I'm going to project here so far for the season. It's Seattle in Germany on a nice Sunday morning traveling to uh, play the Buccaneers. I think that the Bucs are going to win by 20, maybe 30 points. Uh, the Bucs are a really good team. Their offense is super explosive. They have – very nice, solid O-line, even with a couple losses this offseason. I'm pretty confident that they're going to be okay. Obviously, you have Tom Brady. You have a nasty, nasty defense that just has an incredible pass rush. They have really nice corners, really nice safeties, really uh, maybe the best linebacking uh, duo in the NFL. Now that Bobby Wagner and Jordan Brooks aren't together in Devin White and Levante David. The Bucks are going to win this game, in my opinion, pretty handily. You know, Seahawks traveling to Germany. Uh, they're going to be – the all frazzled. I think that the Bucks have a might have you know they have Tom Brady. They're going to be able to bring bring it together a bit more, perhaps more than the Seahawks. So going into the bye, the Seahawks are three and seven. That's what I have. Not great, obviously, um, but I think that this is perfectly realistic. You beat you beat two teams that you're supposed to beat, the Falcons, and the Giants, and then you get a win on a division rival at home in the Arizona Cardinals. I think that this is perfectly fair. I don't think that I'm giving them a hard time here. I think that. This is about as fair as you can get. Uh, moving into the bye week in week 11, we're going to pass that. Go to week 12 where Las Vegas visits the Seahawks. I'm giving this to Las Vegas. I think that they're a really, really nice team. They're a very complete complete squad. And, um, yeah, I don't see the Seahawks really lasting at all here. Week 13, Seahawks visit L.A. They visit Bobby Wagner. Seahawks have never performed well in SoFi Stadium uh, up to this point. They've always played poorly so far, and I'm going to say that that continues. I think L.A. will win pretty handily here and uh, win in week uh, 13 against the Seahawks. So, yeah, not a great look. Pretty ugly. I'm just going to hope that uh, this leads to us getting Bryce Young. Currently at the moment, we're 3-9, and nine, and we're about to be 3-10. and 10. Uh, Panthers coming off of a bye, going into Seattle. I'm going to have the Panthers winning here. Uh, I, I, I think that the Panthers are better. I think it's that I think that's a perfectly fair statement. I think they're pretty handily better. They have uh, Robbie Anderson and Robbie Anderson, uh, DJ Moore. I don't think that that's better than Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf, but our corners are worse than the Panthers. So they're going to have the matchup there in their favor. They have a really nice defense with Brian Burns. They have a couple uh, – they have Jeremy Chin. Uh, they have a decent linebacking core. They have pretty solid corners. And if Christian McCaffrey, their O line got a little better this offseason. I think Baker Mayfield is going to be going to play okay football for them, and uh, I just don't think the Seahawks are going to win at home there. However, I think they're going to win next week. Another little bit of a perhaps a surprise win, uh, beating San Francisco at home Thursday night. Seahawks have tra- traditionally uh, play, played pretty well on Thursday night, uh, and especially at home. You know, they're going to get the fans rocking in prime time. Even though morale is down for the entire team, I think that the fans are still going to pull through and uh, cheer on the Seahawks. And I think that they're going to get a win against San Francisco. You know, you never know what could happen to anybody with injuries at this point. And anyways, even not predicting injuries, I think that the Seahawks are going to be able to take this game. Like I said, I think they're going to split a lot of these division series. Teams just know them really well. And the Seahawks usually have the 49ers number. So that I'm really, I'm going to give Seattle the win on that one. Week 16, we visit Kansas City. I'm giving this to Kansas City. You know, Arrowhead Field has a little bit of reputation, maybe just behind Seattle and maybe Buffalo, a couple other spots, as being a really tough place to play. Very loud, fans very passionate. 
I don't think that we win that game. I I I think that the Kansas City's gonna gonna do pretty well against us. And uh, Pat Mahomes, Andy Reid, gonna kind of dissect the defense a little bit, maybe down the line. And yeah, I'm not very confident in the Seahawks putting together a great game in Kansas City in Week 16. However, I'm going to have them finishing on a bit of a happy note. Week 17 against the Jets and Week 18 against the Rams, I'm going to give them two Ws. Uh, Jets are not good. And visiting Seattle, I think that, you know, Seattle's not going to take that. They're not going to take that thing down. Jamal Adams, Geno Smith has a little bit of history with the Jets, maybe a bit of bad blood with the Jets. And I don't think that that they're just going to lay down and, and take an L here. I don't think they're going to be like, oh, all right, fine, we suck. I guess we'll take an L. No, I think that I think that the at home the Seahawks are not going to want to die, just kind of just you know float float in the water all the way to the end of the season. I think they want to you know maybe get a couple wins here, and I have them doing that with Week 18 against the Rams. I think that the Rams probably end up resting a majority of their starters, and. You know, I think that the Seahawks at home, they're going to be playing all of their starters. I would imagine that the Rams, that that the Rams won't be able to, it, it'll be like the Rams backups playing the Seahawks starters in a preseason game. And, and I'm going to give the Seahawks the win on that one. Which brings the season to 6-11. and 11. One win worse than, one game worse than last year. We ended up going 3-3 three and three in the division. Um, I don't see this team being good. I don't know where it's going to end up. I would imagine a 6-11 record probably gives us somewhere between the 7th to, like, 5th pick, if I had to imagine. Because I think there's going to be a lot of really good teams this year. And, you know, like there's going to be a lot of good teams in the AFC. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I see 13 teams in the AFC that can reasonably compete for a playoff spot. Maybe not so much in the NFC. I have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine. So that gives me what, like 22 teams that I think that can compete for a playoff spot. I think that with a 6-11 record, Seattle's probably going to fall in that 7-5 to range. Might be enough for a quarterback. You never know. But that is my thoughts on the Seahawks season. I don't – I'm not very optimistic. I'm not very confident that we're going to be able to win games. And, uh, by the way, the Seahawks are going to have a winning record at home. I uh, A little bit of a note here. Seahawks go 6-3 and three at home. If you're not watching, you can't see this. I have Seahawks going 6-3 and three at home. Uh, oh, and a oh, and eight at away games. That's not on purpose. I just don't think that the away games are very easy games. I think that the Niners are away games are 49ers, uh, Lions, Saints, Chargers, Cardinals, Bucks, which is listed as an away game, uh, Rams, and Chiefs. I don't think that those are games that realistically i mean i think all of those teams will probably end up having a winning record by the end of the year maybe besides the lions and the cardinals but i think a majority of those teams are probably going to end up having winning records are going to be in the playoff hunt so i had the seahawks uh finishing uh a three and eleven versus winning teams three and oh versus losing teams five and seven in the conference so i like i said i have them splitting in the division going 500 three and three if I had to predict, I would say that probably Drew Locke starts six or seven games in there. I don't think it's that crazy to predict that. But that's my thought. Those are my thoughts on the Seahawks season. Not very optimistic. Give your thoughts in the comments below. I want to see what you guys think. I'm not very sure how this is going to go. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.